Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how to utilize the free software JabRef to create bibliographic entries. Let's get started. So first off, go on and download JabRef. So if you go to jab, J -A -B, ref, R-E-F dot org and go to the download section and go in and grab a, a copy of um, JabRef, uh, we'll be able to get started. So again, this is uh, an open source uh, bibliographic or reference um, citation uh, software that is uh, used a lot. Uh, and it is free to download and it's uh, cross compatible with Windows, Linux, uh, Mac OS X. Uh, so I'm going to go on and open this up and I'm going to ignore this particular update. But here I'm going to um, go through and we can kind of see here um, just kind of the interface here. So and again, I'm using the Mac version. You guys can feel free to use any other, but they should be about the same. Um, all you really need to do is you can go to file and you can create up a new library. And here this is going to uh, say that you don't have any content in your table. I'm going to go on and save this as um, I mean, put it on my desktop for now because I'll delete it later. And we'll just say uh, my uh, project references. And then you can do a couple things. You can add these, uh, use the add symbol here to add them one by one if you want, and you can type them out. Uh, so you can put in uh, author, so some body name, a title, some title, journal, uh, some fancy journal, 2022, citation key, blah, 2020. Okay, so again, this is just a, a basic. Okay, um, you can create and in, enter those fields, and you can see here that they are going in. You can see that it will create up a bib text source for you. It will create up uh, LaTeX sources if you so need to. Um, you can also create in uh, related articles. You can put in and you can type in an abstract. Uh, you can also put in just some uh, general information. So, for example, if you have a DOI number, you have cross-references, keywords, um, depreciated fields, and optional fields. So, again, you can have ISN, all of this type of anything. And one of the things that I find probably the most useful is this comment section. I like to type out comments and like basically do a, uh, my literature review right inside of the comment so that if I'm going to happen to use this journal article over and over and over again, I kind of already have um, a bit of a review already written up so that I can put it in and I can rewrite it to fit with whatever my current project or paper is. So this is, this is nice and all so that I uh, can show you guys how to enter all of this, but this, to be honest, is not the best part about all of this. The best part is if we go back over and we go to uh, Google Scholar, and let's say that just in our last um, example, we wanted uh, information quality. Okay, and we run this. And again, so we had um, a journal article that we're interested in. We can go on and cite this article. Now, I always like to grab the bib text. Okay, so I'm going to right click, I'm going to save this, I'm going to save this. Again, I'm going to put this just on my desktop for now, but I would save them usually in a folder with all of my uh, bibliographic information. Um, and then this one was, um, I'm just gonna say Wang123 for now. Um, and I want to, when I save this, I uh, it'll ask if you I'm like this is for Mac, okay? Um, but it sometimes I'll ask you if you want to append this .txt. We do not want to append because we want it to stay as a bib file. And so then I'll go back over to my 
um, nice bibliographic file here, and I can do file, and I can say import in here, and I can import either uh, into current library or into a new library, so this is into my current library. And I'm going to go over to my desktop. I'm going to grab that bibliographic entry. I'm going to open it. And you can see here that it has all of this information. Download link online files. I'm, I'm going to tell it to import. And then notice now we have Lee et al. And if I click on that and we go over here, notice it has all of the authors. It has the title, it has all of the journal information, it has the year, it even has these optional fields put in. It doesn't have any depreciated fields, it doesn't have any other fields besides the publisher. It has some general, it doesn't have any general information on this particular one, but then it, and it also doesn't have an abstract. So what I would do is, for example, this doesn't have the abstract. I would go back over and I would click on that link and I would go over and I actually see here, um, whoops, I don't know what happened there. There is the abstract and so I would go through and I would actually highlight that abstract. I'm gonna copy the abstract and I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna go in and paste that in there because I want as much information about this article as I can. And then I would go through and again, I would go through and read this paper and I would write up all of the information. So what are the qualities and everything else? Um, check back to my uh, literature review um, or in the reviewing literature video uh, that'll show you how to actually write up um, a review of a paper. And I would always write up my reviews inside of this comment section here. And again, you could put in later on if you want, you can put in more related articles. And notice here, there's a nice bibliotext, bib text entry as well. Uh, let's go on and maybe do one more example. And I'm gonna, let me see if I can find something that has, I wanna find something that has a nice DOI number. But one of the only ways that I actually, uh, I had uh, thought besides actually going through, I actually grabbed one of my own papers. Um, so here I'm going through Google Scholar. And if I click on here, notice that this takes me to the journal's website. This is another way that you can get uh, citation information. And for example, here, you see that there is a DOI number here, and this gives you access again this just if this link just takes you back to this page but again a lot of times this DOI number has a lot of information that is very useful and you can also download notice here here you can download the citation and so here it has a bunch of different ways that you can download it so I'm going to grab the bib text file and I want to grab I'm going to grab actually a lot of information okay and so I'm going to tell it to allow it's going to download and I think if I go over this, let me pull this up, uh, our example over here. And so I'm gonna go and do file. Uh, I'm going to import to the current library here. I'm gonna go to downloads. I'm gonna grab that bib file. And then notice here, because I told it, whenever I downloaded here, I said, grab the citation and references for the content below. And so this is grabbing this paper, okay? And then it's grabbing all of the papers that were cited within that paper. Okay, so if you find a really good reference paper, this is a great way to grab all of these citations all at once. And so let's assume that we want to select all of these entries to import. And I'm going to go in and import them. And notice now our, um, our collection, our bibliography has gotten significantly larger. So again here, for example, we have uh, some of Schiller's work. Okay, notice it doesn't have any of that information that we may want in it, so we would have to go back through and maybe collect them as needed. Um, but here is the original paper that we had, that we wanted. And again, it has our bib text source. And notice here, okay, we have uh, information about the bib, uh, the DOI, we have all of this extra information on there. And sometimes that just happens to be about, um, about where you grab that data from. Okay, so sometimes it just depends on where you're searching from. Sometimes even universities and schools have their own system. And again, you can almost always download in a .bib file and import that. And again, I would notice here it does not have the abstract. I would go back over. I would make sure to zoom out here. And I would grab 
the abstract, just going through this one more time. Okay, I would go back over, I would put that abstract in. And again, I would go through just like we did in the, uh, we talked about in some of the uh, literature review videos is go through and run your literature review, grab the quality criteria that you have and write up a small review of that paper inside of the comments and that way you always have it. So this has been a quick overview of how to utilize um, some bibliographic software, specifically we're using Jabref. If you guys found this helpful, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.